This is the 1996 Cadillac Fleetwood Brome 5.7 LT1 V4P trailering package car with every available option. Chrome wheels, Astro roof, everything. Brand new with the window sticker on it. Triple black. So I was making a video of this just kind of for the future. And so let's just start with the, the window sticker. And here we have a whopping price in 1996 of $43,000. So you can see the options here, which is the, the Brome package, uh, which is the leather stuff and all that. Then you got your Astro roof with $1,550 there. Chrome wheels, another $1,195. Then the trailer towing package, which is really a cheap deal compared to all of the hardware this car really gets laden with. That's a bonus uh, because that becomes an FE2 car. It becomes a V4P car. becomes an engine-driven fan car with an uh, electric booster fan, an oil cooler car, transmission cooler car. So, yeah, that's a, that's a heck of a deal. <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't say chrome wheels are worth the 1100 bucks but that trailer package is certainly worth it but anyway so that's just kind of one of these that's fully loaded and so here's your astro roof I've got it tilted up uh, so let's look at a little bit more of this car and if you uh, didn't show up on YouTube I have an entire video of this thing up on a lift so you can see the bottom of it too uh, again, this is not a sales pitch. This is not anything to do with it. That's just, this is just to represent the car so people know what they look like. Um, this car is not for sale. It is, uh, this is just a reference. And so let's look at the engine here. Here's your LT1 motor. And you'll see the big cooler down here. And then you've got this bubble fan, which is part of, you know, creates the uh, engine driven fan, which is, you know, people love electric fans, but no, for heavy duty, that's not the way to go. Your big 18 wheelers ain't running electric fans on them. Neither are your big diesel trucks. So uh, this has both. This has the, uh, the electric fan down under that area and the engine driven fan. But other than that, in the oil cooler, I think it's pretty much the same as all the other LT1 configurations with the straight across radiator, which is like on your Impala SS, which is sad that they didn't put that on the Impala SS because that would have been a better option to do that. Um, you know, it's kind of one of the funny things is I remember reading a test somewhere in, I'll oh, pick a year, 95, 96, when these cars were relatively new and they put all three of these cars against each other. When I say three Impala SS, Buick Roadmaster and Cadillac Brome. And the Buick Roadmaster happened to be optioned with the trailer towing package and it just slaughtered everything. So I would imagine that vice versa, it'd be the same same deal here. So they're quicker gears. I think the gears on these are 307 and I think, I don't remember what the other ones are, 256 maybe. Uh, now the Apollo SS is a 307 gear also, but um, so. Now you can look at the, the side of this car. You can see the depth of it, the paint on this thing. Remember, this is this is a museum car. This is not something that's been stuffed in a garage, in a regular garage. It has been in the Heritage Museum and in my collection. And between my two buildings that I've owned over the years, they're all like this. So this is where this car has set. Runs a 20 ton air condition, run, you know, dehumidifiers, we run everything. So you cannot get, you know, I can't say you can't get any better than this, but, this is not somebody's garage that heat cycles in the summer and the winter and gets hot and cold. This is, if there's a Louvre, you know, or a uh, uh, National Museum of Art for cars, that's pretty much what we have here, so. And uh, there's all the stuff there, old Don Massey. You see that side there. I should have taken these boards out to represent this more. We put these boards in there to keep the uh, any hot tires or anything like that from peeling the paint up until they cool off and bring our warmer cars in here, but they're not the prettiest thing to see. So we can see down in there. Uh, there's your chrome wheels. And of course, you know, these are the Michelin uh, 
I mean, excuse me, Goodyear GA tires, which are specific to your FE2 cars. If you've got the uh, FE1, the more mush ride cars, which are really intolerable in my opinion on these cars, um, they just become a laden boat. This car drives very, very uh, touring like, uh, almost Impala SS like with the FE2. So uh, those are the better tires. Uh, Goodyear GA. I, I think Michelin's were on the other car because they're more mushy, but uh, yeah, there's me. Say hello. <laughs> if you uh, follow my stuff over the years, I don't. I don't show myself too much. Mo mostly in reflections, but I'm almost sixty now. So there you go. There's tires, wheels, and the factory chrome wheels. You know, a lot of those get done aftermarket wise, but these were, you know, you saw it on the window sticker. That's original. So everything on this car is original. And uh, if you watch the undercarriage video, you'll see the oil, the, uh, oil filter is original. And yeah, the oil is original too. So uh, we figured out. I figure oil's 30 million years old. It's not going to hurt it in a museum environment. Of course, if you, somebody wanted to try and take this car and they're spinning it on the road and destroying it and using it up, yeah, you'd want to change that. But no, I'm not going to do it right now just for the sake of it. And no, it doesn't hurt it because you're going to see a video soon with my daily driver F-150 that I've had since 2010. And it now has 180,000 miles on it. And just to show you I could do it, I've never changed the oil on it. So, yep, and that's correct. I've added oil to it, but never changed it. Just to say you can do it. It's a 4.6, so you can get away with that. EcoBoost, you'd probably destroy it. Anything else, you'd destroy it. So, But that's another subject. I don't do that on my nice cars. <laughs> it's just my beater. Mm -hmm. mm, okay. Uh, this is, I believe it's an option. I can't remember. It wasn't on the window sticker. Some of these cars had it. Some of them didn't. It's that Sungate window. And that's that same window that you see on the, the ZR1. Uh, that's that auto tinting window. I think that's the only other GM car that used it was these and the ZR1. Uh, so they, they have a solar tint to them kind of thing. And you can see... This one's not bad at all. They do the same thing of delamination. You can see a little bit in the corner there. And that's just, you know, in God's hands, it's going to do that. I've got a 95 ZR1. We had to pull the window out of it. It's brand new because it got so bad. But I've got two 90s that are very tolerable. Um, and they're all, you know, damn near no mile cars. Well, two of them are no mile cars. But anyway, so uh, that's that. And there's your old... Uh, <laughs> home plate deal they call it there and of course this is an opti spark car and those are known for having trouble uh two versions of the opti spark one of them has a vent one of them doesn't i think the crossover year maybe 93 or no excuse me 94 on that i can't remember because the corvette's the one that kind of had that corvette has had the uh opti spark lt1 since 92 uh and then and of course the motor ran to 96 but in the brome uh it's 94, 5, and 6 uh, in your Roadmaster, Impala SS, and uh, Brome, of course. And if you had a 93, and he says, I got a car that looks just like that, but it's got the 5.7 throttle body engine, they ain't nothing like this. Trust me. <laughs> nothing at all. So those, if you see a deal on a 93, it's just because it ain't got a motor in it. <laughs> That's why. Um, so... Here's another telltale sign of these cars of age. Uh, these reverse lights, you'll see just about most any of them that are used that have different uh, variations of yellowness to them that can go from, you know, just still pretty nice to just flat yellow where you can't even see in there. They look like it's a yellow stripe on the back of the car. Um, so that's that. What else can I show you? Of course, these are always notorious for crapping out too. Um, just making sure Some dust on there and the power antenna you know they usually break but at least you can change these from the back on these cars this one of course works perfect um 
So I'll go to the inside. I'm not sure what else I missed on the outside here. And of course this chrome cladding. You know, when these cars came out new, uh, especially in 93, they were like, oh my God, that car's ugly, oh my God. But I can tell you this much of owning, I don't know how many Broms I've owned from, you know, from there to uh, a lot of uh, 90 to 92s, if y'all follow my, my stuff. To, uh, to, you know, 80s or 70, 77s to, uh, to 92s. If you want a car to drive that can drive like modern standards, this is about as good as it gets. And it's now a classic. And yes, these cars are capable. Of course, you can't do it in the Brome unless you get the uh, programmer for it. But these cars can go 150 miles an hour, no problem. And they're very, very let's just say, I wouldn't say fast, but extremely adequate for what they are. It's like an Impala SS. People expect that car to be fast, but no, these are just as fast. So, um, in fact, like I said, if you had the tow package, they're actually a little faster. So, that's kind of that. Uh, so, these are another problem with these cars too. Um, in fact, Somebody is making these in metal chrome now, and that is really, really, really nice. These are original, and they're still their, their plastic, uh, you know, what do you call it deals there. And usually these will bubble up, delaminate, but you can see what one looks like that, that's this new. It's supposed to look that way. That's how it is there. And... So those are things that go go wrong with a car. And the front one's usually the spires doing too. So if you've got an older Brome that has those, those, I think they're on eBay, a guy sells them. I've never bought a set of the metal ones yet, man, but I think, man, I'd start buying a car that has those peeled off on it just for, to put those on it. They're, I'm sure they're better than this. And these are brand new, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here you can, this one has a, look at that. Just, Hard to see, but I saw a little bubble on it. Oh, there it is. Barely a speck, but they're starting to, one day this one will fail too, but for now it's very, very acceptable and new. So those are your weak points to these cars. Of course, they get in the sun for take a car this old and put it in the sun for a week, they'll probably bubble up too, so who knows. Um, then the other issue these cars have too is, I've repainted a lot of these cars over here. Of course, this one, no, it's, it's totally original. It's got some wax on it there, but these silver trim parts right here will fade in the sun and they'll become almost a yellow uh, when that silver paint comes off, but best thing to do is just really, really well mask the car off and just use a, a rattle can of the same color paint. Um, I can't remember what color we've used before on them to do that, but that's just a reference because this car is, is what, this is what they're supposed to look like, at least as perfect as they can be for the age of this car and being brand new still. So that's what those are. And of course these lower chrome pieces are what make these cars it is cool these are really high quality pieces down here it gets in my dust rag excuse me I don't wipe, I don't wipe that off real quick because put a little bit of quick detailer on it and need to be wiped so all right that's kind of the outside I don't know what else I can show we're going to go to the inside now. Oh yeah, you can see, of course, these two in the sun, these will always go faded and bad. And of course, the one on the trunk too. Um, it's just things you see on these in the year, over the years. And that's what perfect should look like. And of course, the filler down here, this is what they're supposed to look like. Um, these years do not have, you know, the older cars had the unleaded fuel only sticker on there. These years do not have that on there, so this is the way it's supposed to be. And this is an optional locking system, so it has the pin on it. Uh, I don't believe all of the cars have that, so there's a, a deal there. It may be part of the Brome package, but uh, I know I've seen ones without it. Um, here's the other part, too. 
Uh, this is a body color metal piece trim here. And usually these, you know, they're aluminum. And so you'll see the paint come off of them and they'll look a, like a, a bright piece of aluminum all the way back there. And of course, if you've got an, a brome that's been weathered a little bit or, you know, just used nicely, you can just pop that thing off of there and, and repaint it, of course. But that's original and that's the way it's supposed to be. There's the other side of them there. Uh, kind of that. So. <laughs> and a lot of these cars get tinted windows, which I think, you know, if you're going to have a driver, it's, it's, it's fine to do that. I think they look pretty good when you do the right, not crazy, but a little bit, but these are not tinted. And on a black car, it really does kind of <clears throat> accentuate the car and help it some. Not, a, not a, uh, opposed to that at all, but God knows you can't do it to this car. Okay, so here's the inside. And so, obviously, you know, a lot of these get cracked here. Inside's pretty straightforward. These are you know, not as attractive as your de-elegance cars by any means. Um, and things like that. So, they're pretty simple. But that's your brome with the heated seats. And usually these things get holes in them right through here. People pinch them and sit on them. So, that's what they're supposed to look like i'm a lighting problem now here's an interesting thing we have cleaned the outside of this car i have we have literally never ever cleaned the inside of this car this is this is it it's never been vacuumed it's never been anything uh, so. of course you've got your uh oh no never mind you remember the uh the pull down uh uh, things I forgot. The, the Astro Roof car does not have those up there. Your your back mirrors. So how about that? I forgot all about that. So yeah, those uh, those mi vanity mirrors that are back here. I'm sorry, the lighting's horrible. I need to. I'm gonna parse this video. I'm gonna stop it. Turn the light on my phone so you can see better in here. All right, I got it lit up now, so you can kind of see the that. So yeah. That's if you get an Astro Roof, you lose those vanity mirrors, and that's just part of the ga the game there. So uh, you can see the uh, garage door up there's your your Astro Roof switch, factory position, uh, your uh, garage door opener unit there, which I have uh, in the the stuff for this car, a brand new one for it. So and it came with the car, and then of course there's your your dash with your optional CD. Uh, unit there. Uh, the air conditioning controls are pretty much standard on all your bromes. Same stuff. Very reliable, actually. Steering wheel, um, things like that. Let's go back up to the front. And there we go. Here we go. So, 813 miles. She's a running. Of course, I got the door ajar, open button there on. And then hold the brake so that one goes off. Air condition, radio, antenna's going up. It's back up there. Turn that noise down. All good to go, all good to go. So there's your mirror. Uh, has some map lights on it there. Both sides. What else? Uh, passenger door, seat controls are on the top. Uh, heated seats down over there. Same as the driver, uh, of course. And, you know, look at this. I believe we took this out to put one of those, I use one of those cigarette chargers on these cars. So. Brand new. Um. Mm. What do we got playing here? No idea what I did there. Hit the wrong button. 
We're inside the building too, so part of the station. Turn the temperature down. Feels nice. <clears throat> These are the air conditions in these cars are good. That's one of the things that people don't realize. Just look at the size of the dash in this car. It's, you know, basically a table that, for the last supper. And this car is not that big. I mean, I got a, you know, cup car, NASCAR over there. It's actually bigger than this thing. That's, that's a, not a joke. They actually are. Uh, let me turn this thing down. But a lot of the reasons these newer cars, when I say newer, uh, when they went to the R134A Freon, they had to make the evaporators on the car bigger because they're not as efficient. And so to make the air work pretty good, and this car air condition works great because it's designed for 134. But any of the retrofit cars, let's go look at uh, this over here. I'm gonna like, turn this thing off. Uh. So we got the power antenna going down. So, uh, any of the older cars like this, this is just as big a car, and really it's kind of the same frame platform as the, as the 96 Brom. Look at the size of your dash. I mean, it's just nothing. And because it's an R12 evaporator, the R12 evaporator is about less than half the size of a 134. And so, uh, the R12 is a much, much more efficient Freon. Of course, your government tells you different, that you can't have it. And now the R134A is going to be banned. So you've got to go to the 1234Y or whatever it's called now. And I, I have only messed with that lightly because I don't deal with brand, brand new cars all the time. But uh, I'm actually, you know, a certified AC tech. And so I um, have been for years for Cadillac. So um, way back in the day, in the 80s. <clears throat> and uh, one of the funny things that I learned... Uh, about when you take the refrigeration course to to uh, to be able to purchase Freon and work on cars for that is let me show you one of these because I got one over here you know we can't let Freon out of the cars because it's going to hurt the ozone it's going to hurt the environment it's bad for all that but look at this this is an R12 bottle I've been using for all my R12 stuff is pretty much about empty now, but it's still got a little bit in there. So in the program, when you learn about, you know, the refrigeration license of purchase Freon, they tell you, at least the guy that did ours said, well, you know who the biggest offender is, is the United States government, the SR22 program. They burn 300 pounds of Freon every time they fly over a foreign nation to cool the vapor trail of an SR22. So they inject the Freon right in the back of the, the jet to get rid of the, the contrail so the enemy doesn't see it. But yet, we're not supposed to let any out. So do as I say, understand? Oh, you know what I got here? We had to tape that up because I pulled the bulb out of there and one of the little tabs broke on that light those things are just cheap. So I glued it a while back, but made sure it was uh, good again. So let's make it all correct factory perfection here. Okay. Well, I can't plug a light in with a phone in my hand, can I? Mm, come on. There we go. So there we go. Yeehaw. All right. So I don't know what else I can show. This is going to be a pretty long video, but that is it. And, you know, so one day I may not own this car anymore. Um, like I said it's not for sale by any means, but um, if I don't own it, I'm keeping this as a reference to what one of these look like. Because there's a fact, I will never, ever, ever, no matter what I do, no matter how much I pay, 
own one this good again unless I go <laughs> buy it back from the guy that gets it. So this is, I consider this is, this has got to be the best in the world. Does not get any better than this, especially when you take in the fact of all the options. It's got 800 miles on it. It's been in a GM museum. It's been in my museum and it's, uh, it is what it is. So this is just a future reference. So if you have a 96 Brougham, uh, I hope I did a good enough job showing you what one of these kind of should look like. So you know uh, if you're fixing yours up a little bit. Uh, and that, this applies, of course, even to 93, 4, 5, and 6, except for under the hood, 94, 5, and 6. Uh, the LT1 motor. And we got a Delco sticker coming from that. So. <clears throat> That's actually a... Uh, I buy these batteries and you can put the Delco stickers on them because they're way better than buying that. These are the, the uh, O'Reilly's uh, premium batteries. So, and you can put toppers on those too, real good like we did here. This is a topper. So, decent batteries and they, uh, they stand behind them. Um, what else? That's kind of it. Thanks for watching.